Hey, what's happening guys? In this video, I wanna take a look at how we can solve the first non-repeating character problem in Clojure. So let's get started. Uncle Gear. So I saw this problem in a Nick White video, which I'll link in the description, and he does all his solutions in Java. And I wanna take his Java solutions and show how you could use those solutions in Clojure. And why would you wanna use Clojure instead of Java? Well, if you check out the top paying technologies on the Stack Overflow developer survey, you can see that Clojure is number one. Well, Java is like pretty low at the bottom. So that's a good reason. So if you don't know what the problem is, let me just show you. Basically, you'll have a string and the string contains characters and you wanna find the first character that doesn't repeat in the string. So in this example, we have two A's, they repeat, so they're not the answer. B, that's not repeating. Double C, those are repeating. So we need to return B because it's the first non-repeating character. A, B, C, they all don't repeat, but A is the first one. A, A, B, B, C, C, they all repeat, so there's no answer, so we just return null. A, A, B, C, C, D, B is the first one that doesn't repeat, so we'll return B. That's the premise of the problem. So the first Nick White solution I wanna look at is he creates a map or a key value store where the key would be the character and the value will be the count of how many times that character occurs. Once he's built up this map, he'll loop over the string again and check the character in the map and if the value of the character is one, then it's the first not repeating one and you'll return. Cool, so this is how he implements that in Java. So he creates a hash map, then he loops over the string and then if the hash map contains the key, then he increases the value by one. Otherwise he puts one as the value for that key. Then he does another loop over the string. And as soon as he finds the first character that has a value of one in that hash map, he returns. Cool, so let's look at implementing this solution in Clojure. I just have a function here called solution one and solution one in the comment here so we can run it once we've created it. So the first thing we need to do is create that um, character map. So I'm gonna create a let binding here and I'm gonna call this, what did he call it? Char counts, so I'll call it char counts. And I'm gonna create this map using a reduce function. So we're gonna reduce over the string S and we wanna pass through a default value of an empty map. And then we're gonna have a function which takes in the accumulator, which would be our map and then the value, which will be our character. And then we need to check what the current count is. So I'm gonna create another let bounding here and we'll say the current count and we'll get from our map, the character and we'll default that value to zero. Then what we'll do is we'll search inside of our map that we're building up, the character C with the increased incremented current count. So let's just return char counts and let's see what we get. Cool, so now what we get is we get a map back and we have two A's, two B's, one C, one D, an E and an F. So if this doesn't make sense to you, basically what we're doing is we're just reducing. So we'll go reduce over a string. So if we had A, B, C, and then we're putting that inside of a map and then we're running that function over it and the accumulator would basically be our map and the value here which would be C would be our character. So if we just did a print line of C here, we'll see that we get A, B, C. It just loops over the string like that. And then we'll do an associ. So we'll put this value inside of our map. So we could associ um, our accumulator. So we'll associ our accumulator C with the value of one, let's say. Cool, and now we've just made a map where the keys are A1, B1, C1. But of course we needed to get the current count. To do that, we use this get function. So basically what the get function does is if we had get from a map, we'll have the character A and one, and then we said we wanna get the value for the key A, it'll return one. If the key A didn't exist, let's just say we had B, it'll return nil, but the following argument will give us a default. So if we did this, we'd get one. So we default that get to zero. And then when we associate the value, we also increase it. So it'll always be one or more. Cool, and that's how that works. Then what we need to do is we need to do this part here. That's where he loops over the string again, gets the value for that key in the map. And if that value is one, meaning it only occurs once in the string, he returns it. So let's do that. So I'm gonna do that with a filter. So I want to filter out from our string, 
and I'm going to pass an anonymous function here. And we want to check if the value, so we'll get from our char counts, and then it'll be the value of our character. So this is an anonymous function, so that character value will be represented by a percentage sign, and we want to make sure that it equals one. So now if we return this, we just need to put this inside of here and get rid of that. Now, if we evaluate this, we should just get a list back of all the characters which have one. Cool, but now we actually want to get the first one from that list, the first character. So we can just wrap this in a first, put this back here and run this and evaluate this. And the first non-repeating character is C. Cool, and that's the first solution. And then you can see in his example, he breaks out early. So he doesn't need to necessarily complete the loop for the string. And that actually still happens here with closure. Now let's look at his second solution. So I'm going to define a function here called solution two. And it takes in a string also. And let me just clear this. So his second solution is he creates um, a vector with 26 zeros, where the first element represents the count of A, the second one represents the count of B, the third one the count of C. So here we can see that he must loop over the string increase the value of the A position by three because there's three A's, B by one, C by three, and so on. So let's just see how he implements that in Java. So his solution in Java is he creates an integer array of 26 spaces, he loops over the string, and then increases where the character's position should be by one. Then he loops over the string again. If the value of that character's position is equal to one, then he returns it. So it's very similar to the last example, but instead of using a map, he's using a vector to represent the counts. So let's implement that in Clojure. So the first thing I want to do here is I want to create that vector list. So we'll do the same. We'll create another reduce. So I'm going to call it char counts also. And we're going to reduce over our string. I want to pass through the starting value of that vector of 26 zeros. So a way we can do that is we can use the vector function and then we can wrap that around repeat 26 zero and this will give us a vector of 26 zeros so repeat will basically repeat this argument this many times and vector will make it a vector so let's cut this here and i'm just going to put it here as our initial argument for the reduce weird i don't know i did that cool let's kill this and then we need to create our function here so our function and it takes the accumulator and then the value which is our character and then we need to look at how we can get the index of our character inside of that vector. So I want to actually create another function here called get index. And it's going to be a function where we get a character and we want to minus the integer value of that character. So let's just do this. Minus the integer value of the character by A. So we'll make it the integer value of the character A. And to show you what that does is if you have an integer of the character value A, you'll get 97. So let's just say we have um, integer character B minus the character A, it'll give us the first index bit. And then if we did A minus A, it'll give us the zero index. Cool, and that's how we can find the index. So let's move that here and we'll create another let binding here. So let, we'll say the index is the value of get index of our character. Then we need to get the current count basically what we did at the top here. So we'll get the current count and that would be the nth position of our accumulator at our current index. So what we're doing here to get the current count is basically if we had nth and we'll have a vector here, let's say one, zero, or well, let's actually say a, b, c, and we wanted the value for the index zero, it will return a, for the index one, it will return b, and for the index two, it returns C. And that's what we're doing here. So we're getting the index of the character. So if it was A, for example, get index would return zero, and then we would return the first value here. So that would be representing our current count. Then what we need to do is just like we did here, increase the, ve the count in our vector. So what we'll do is we'll associate inside of our accumulator, which is our vector at our index and increase current count. So let's just return char counts. And I'm just going to copy this and run solution two. Cool, we can see that we have two A's, two B's, we'll have a C, a D, an E, and an F. And if we had a Z here, 
we'd also increase one at the end here. Cool. So then what we need to do is pretty much the same as this. So I think I can even copy this and paste it here. But this obviously won't work because now we're using a vector instead of a map. So what we'll do is we'll get the nth position from our char counts and we'll have to get the index of our character, which will be represented by the percentage sign. So let's evaluate this and let's test it out. Cool, and we get C, which is the first non-repeating character. Awesome, so let's look at another one of his solutions. Just gonna clear this. Cool, so this is his last solution. So basically what he does is he loops over the string and he checks whether the index of the character is equal to the in, is equal to the last index of the character. And if they are equal, it means the character only occurs once, which means it's the character we're looking for. So we can pretty much implement, well, let's just see how he implements this in Java. So this is his implementation of that in Java. He loops through the string and he checks that if the index of the character is equal to the last index of the character, and if it is, then he returns that character. So let's implement that in Clojure. So let's just count close this and we'll define solution three and we'll take an S and then I think we can actually just do this with first and then we'll run filter on our string. So we'll filter our string and we'll pass through a function here with the character. And then what we can check is if the first index is equal to the last index. So we can use closure dot string forward slash index of, and we need to pass in our string here and then the character. Let's just copy this, paste it here. And then we need to check the last index of. Cool, and I think we can add a require. So that just adds the require for string at the top to make this function a bit neater. And I think that's it. Oh, no such namespace string. Let's evaluate that. And then we can evaluate this function. Cool. And now we can run solution three. Cool. And that works. That's how you can implement his solutions in Clojure and make an extra $40,000 a year. I hope you enjoyed it. See you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.